nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Accurate precision gonna... Welcome to another edition of Shufu Review for You. We're back. Hey, this is our second video. I feel like the first one went pretty good. Yeah, I thought it came out very nicely. Little bit of swaying there, though? Well, I did notice that a little bit in post-production, but, you know, I want to thank, thank you for nailing my sneakers down to the floor this time. Facing forward, too. We're not facing the screen this time. Even better. Are we ready to get started? I think so. Let's do it. Formulas and Equations, Key Concept 1. A chemical compound is a pure substance made of two or more elements chemically combined in a fixed ratio. To make water, you have to have the elements hydrogen and oxygen. You have to have two hydrogens for every one oxygen atom in a water molecule. If you have two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms, then you have a different substance called hydrogen peroxide. Every chemical compound has its own fixed ratio of elements in that compound. Formulas and equations, key concept two. Chemical compounds can be broken down by chemical means to form two or more pure substances with properties that differ from the original compound. Compounds can only be broken down through a chemical change, not a physical one. So when water, for example, breaks down, it's gonna break down into hydrogen and oxygen, and hydrogen and oxygen have completely different properties than the original water from which they came. Formulas and equations, key concept three. The particle atomic structure can be represented by empirical, molecular, or structural formulas. We think of the empirical formula as a whole number reduction of the molecular formula, whereas the molecular formula is the actual number of atoms in that compound. Sometimes the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same thing. For example, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2 for a molecular formula. Its empirical formula reduced is HO. Butane has a molecular formula of C4H10. Its empirical reduces to C2H5. Now propane has an empirical formula of C3H8, and its empirical formula is the same as its molecular. It does not reduce any further. Structural formulas, as the name implies, show the structure of the atoms using dashes as bonds. Formulas and equations, key concept four. The stock system is used to name compounds and uses Roman numerals to show the oxidation number of metals capable of multiple oxidation states in ionic compounds. Let's say that we were going to name a compound involving calcium. We would go to our periodic tables, look up calcium, and in the upper right, we would see that it has a plus two oxidation state. There's only a plus two oxidation state. So if we were to name something like CaCl2, we would simply name it calcium chloride. There would be no need for a Roman numeral. However, if we were naming an ionic compound involving chromium, we would see on the periodic table that its oxidation states are plus two, plus three, or plus six. It could be any of those three. So if we were to name something like CrCl3, we'd have to pick the oxidation state that fit. And since chloride ion has a negative one charge and there's three of them, we would have to have a plus three charge on our chromium. Thus, we would name the compound chromium-3 chloride. Formulas and equations, key concept five. The prefix system is used to name molecular binary compounds in which both elements are nonmetals. So once you've established the fact that you have two nonmetals and you know that it's a covalent or molecular substance, you have to use prefixes to name it. For example, if we have N2O4, we have two nitrogen and four oxygen atoms. We have to name this dinitrogen tetroxide. Formulas and equations, key concept six. 
chemical reactions are represented using balanced chemical equations in which the total numbers and types of atoms found on the reactant side, left, equals that of the product side, right. When you're balancing a chemical equation, you want to make sure that you only change the coefficients, never the subscripts found within the chemical formulas. Now to find the total atoms of an element in your chemical equation, you want to multiply the coefficient by the subscript. Now if you do this on both sides of the equation, then you can ensure that the equation is balanced. Formulas and equations, key concept seven. The four most common types of inorganic chemical reactions include synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, and double replacement. So in synthesis reactions, you want to think of smaller compounds or elements coming together to form one compound. Decomposition can be thought of as the opposite of this. One compound breaking down into two or more smaller elements or simple compounds. Now single replacement is when one atom or one element replaces an atom in another compound, forming a new compound and a new element. Double replacement is when you have two compounds and you take the cations and you swap places to form two brand new compounds. Formulas and equations, key concept eight. Coefficients are used to balance chemical equations and to identify mole ratios among the reactants and products. When we look at a chemical equation, we can think of the coefficients as representing the number of molecules reacting. But we can also think of the coefficients as representing the number of moles reacting. In our example, we have two moles of hydrogen, H2, reacting with one mole of oxygen, O2, to make two moles of water, H2O. In other words, they are in a 2 to 1 to 2 ratio. Formulas and equations, key concept 9. In addition to the conservation of mass, energy and charge are also conserved during a chemical reaction. Now for the most part in this video, we have discussed the conservation of mass. We've balanced equations and seen mole ratios. Now we have to remember that energy and charge are also conserved. Now, we will discuss conservation of energy in a later video on the physical behavior of matter. And we'll discuss conservation of charge later on in Redox. But we never off, we zone to the break of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E -E -E, in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.